And welcome everyone to Missouri Valley Conference Chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Valparaiso's Matt Lottick, the head coach of Valpo. Um, three wins, two in a row, after losing four in a row. Where are you guys for the stretch run of the Valley season? Well, Andy, I think, you know, we're in a good spot. You know, one of the things that, that we've dealt with a lot this year is, and like everyone, I guess, I mean, there's just been a lot of hiccups with injuries, you know, uh, guys being out for, you know, health and safety protocols and things like that. I think, you know, one of the things that we've been able to do is we, as we've gotten healthy is, you know, kind of solidify rotations. Um, and I think it's helped us, you know, our guys are playing with a little more confidence um, and, um, you know, it, it, our league, like everyone, everyone says their league's really tough. I think our league is as strong as it's ever been. Um, you know, you watch, you know, a team like uh, Missouri State go into Loyola and, and beat them pretty handily. You know, we have one of the, um, you know, premier scores in the league that can go into Loyola and, and win by 40. And, and obviously we all know the success that Loyola's had recently. So um, the league's as strong as it's been. Um, you know, I do believe, um, you know, we've got the right pieces to really make a run here. Um, we just got to get better every day. And um, we've been able to do that pretty consistently. And, um, you know, hopefully we can uh, continue to stack some wins. Yeah, to that point, what we've seen this season in the Valley, uh, obviously Loyal looked like the clear favorite, and then bam, Isaiah Mosley goes for 40, and Missouri State wins at Loyal, and now, you know, it's a race. I mean, they got one loss, they got two, other people have two, and right. um, obviously you have a hole, but it seems like the hole you can climb out of at least to be in that yeah. top four, and of course, seating matters for the arch madness to then potentially get a bid, and the beauty of the league this year is we can feel pretty comfortable that if the season were today to end, Loyola would be in, and if someone would beat them, you'd at least get two for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll be in a position where you could get two for sure. We'll see. But what does that do for hope and optimism for your group, you know, basically eight games in that, hey, we can be in yeah. position to make a run and make this thing? Well, I mean, you, you just mentioned, right, like Loyola is probably in season ends today. And, and Andy, I mean – you know, we had them beat at their place. Um, and, you know, I, I told our guys after the game. I watched that game, I remember. Yeah, I said, hey, you beat them. You didn't win, but you beat them. And um, I think that that's got to be, you know, if, if there's anything is like, you know, these just, you know, small victories. Like, um, it, it was devastating for us. Um, but at the same time, I think it, you know, helps with belief um, that you can go into a pretty hostile environment and, and eke out a win. I mean, I, I told our guys everything that we wanted to accomplish at the beginning of the year is still available to us. And, you know, the thing that we've got to continue to do is, is, is remain positive, continue to try to get better every single day. And if we do that, we like our talent and, and we do think we're going to be a hard team to knock off in, in March. And like you said, right. Um, obviously seating matters. Um, and I still think everything that we want to do, uh, we can do. And it'd be nice to uh, not have a play in game. Um, and I think our guys are, are focused on that. But but again, we're, we're focused on the day to day. We're focused on um, today getting better. And, you know, we, we want to, you know, a road game. And anytime you win a road game, it's, it's cause for celebration. And um, I want our guys to enjoy that. We're going to get back to work today. We got a tough Bradley team coming in. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just going to go from there. So to that point, you almost win at Loyola. You win at Indiana State. What is it about this group that travels? Well, I just think we have some veteran presence. You know, we have some guys that have been in the, you know, some some pretty hostile environments in the Big Ten. Um, you know, we're a little more experienced, really like everyone is, right? And so um, I do think, um, you know, experience wins in college basketball, obviously talent wins, but um, having some guys with some experience. Now, blending that experience, right? We've had, you know, guys from the transfer board, but blending that experience is, um, I think what takes a little bit of time and um, I actually talked to, to coach Drew um, Bryce and I are still pretty close and, you know, they brought in a bunch of um, you know, transfers as well. And he just says, you know, my experience, it's, it's around January where everything starts to come together. And um, you know, we're in January and it, and it does feel like we're, we're starting to take some positive steps forward. Hey Matt, while I have you big news in the Valley, uh, mm. I, you know, I think that there's no question the moves the Valley has made in the last year to solidify its standing within leagues that can be multiple bid i think it's significant losing yeah. loyola obviously hurts to go to a10 but then bam belmont mm. murray yeah. state two of the most successful ovc programs you know in recent memory if not ever and then uic uh to to ensure that the valley stays in chicago yeah. near valpo uh, yeah. what's the significance of what we've seen in the last uh, year with these moves well i think you know the 
all those are just no brainers. You know, if you look at it, obviously um, it stinks to see a program like Loyola go um, because I do think, you know, we're headed in that trajectory where, you know, hopefully every year we're a multi-bit league, you know, the Valley, at least when I was playing for a long time, I mean, they were getting, you know, a lot of teams into the tournament. And um, I think the the talent and the coaching, I mean, that they, you know, when we get teams in, they tend to have success. And so, um, but you add these teams like this and, and hopefully, you know, we all can, we can uh, schedule um, in the non-con, you know, pretty aggressively. So then we do come into conference play, um, you know, we're able to, because we're going to beat up on each other. That's just the nature of this league. Uh, but that, you know, it's not, um, you know, one loss kind of, you know, ruins your season or anything like that. And um, I love the direction. The leadership's been great of the league. Um, it's it's a really fun time. I mean, it's it's every game. I mean, every game you better bring it. And uh, I'm sure every coach in the league feels like that. And one last thing, Matt, uh, just for to humor myself, I, I was re-watching your buzzer beater against Washington State. And I yeah. remember, you know, I was at the Mick Robinson buzzer beater when Stanford beat Arizona. Uh, yep. You know, I, I'm curious, one, two quick things. One, which one is better? Because he's a former teammate. Yeah. And then two, the art of the buzzer beater, which you, you have to coach now, like late possession. What do you yeah. do? Uh, what do you tell your team? Well, so first, uh, you know, Nick's still a really good friend of mine, you know, when he hit that shot. And I think, um, you know, after that, you know, one of the things I would say his is better because it's one of the few times probably in Tiger Woods life where people are actually running by him. Yeah. Um, and, and if you, you know, you look back at that, you know, the fans rush, it was an exciting moment, all that. And, um, you know, Tiger's just standing there in half court and people are just flying right by him. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, but then, you know, the art of the buzzer beater, I mean, for, for, um, you know, me, it's, um, you know, we want to try to get the ball in, in a player that's got some confidence. Um, that's got some, uh, not afraid of the moment, um, and let it fly. And then, you know, defensively, we try our best to try to, what are you trying to do? And whatever you're trying to do, we want to probably try to wait, take away that primary action. Um, but seems like there's been a lot of buzzer beaters lately. Yes. I mean, we just experienced one. Uh, ben Cricky drives down the lane, hits a tough layup. And um, and then we had six seconds to defend full court. Guys did a great job. And um, thankfully, their shot didn't go in. So um, but it, it's, it's been a fun year. And uh, I, I think something, I, you know, I read just, you know, the Valleys have been the, the, the closest games of any conference um, in the country. And it seems like, at least for us, I mean, every single game comes down to the last possession. Um, and so that's been fun. And, um, you know, it's a great league, great time to be in college basketball for sure. And there's no question, if anyone goes to Valpo, they can see the mural of one of the greatest buzzer <laughs> beaters ever. Uh, certainly no. right true over Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. Matt, appreciate it. Stay well, be safe. And uh, right. obviously good luck the rest of the season. All right. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate you.